I wish I had learned this truth many years ago. Be thankful for the days, good and bad. All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And as always, I have an amazing Warrior guest, and I'll share her with you in a second. But first, let me tell you about Warrior vs. Zombie and why you're here. Success is a journey. It's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point, and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world. In each episode, I interview warriors from all walks of life. They're aspiring leaders in the area of entrepreneurship, artists, health practitioners, business owners, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause, they have unique value, and a vision that goes generations into the future. And today's guest is no exception. Carolyn Cantrell is an awesome warrior. She's a mother, a musician, entrepreneur, and consultant. Her warrior journey includes leadership in the energy industry. Sorry, got to get that out of my mouth. Since 2005, she holds certifications from both the Energy Professionals Association and the Association of Energy Engineers. Carolyn and her team provide procurement strategy and the management of the procurement process for electricity and natural gas throughout the United States. Carolyn's unique value is reducing the total cost of and optimizing our use of energy. She lives in Dallas, Texas, and is often found playing music with friends, love music. Carolyn is the proud parent of two adult children, and she also works with animal rescue groups in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Carolyn Cantrell, welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. How are you today? I am fine. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. We had an interesting um interesting mastermind last Friday talking about it. very engaging a lot of discussion um, and we'll get into that probably when we're talking about what you're doing as we get into the uh, third segment but uh, so we'll probably talk about the war in Ukraine and the, all the things affecting energy prices and and I think if we kind of felt like uh, energy was not something we were that worried about before the last couple of years, um, there's been a lot of changes that have made everybody worried about that. I just had a conversation with my housekeeper saying, you know, boy, can you believe the cost of gas? And, yeah. and uh, next thing we're going to hear is, can you believe what my electric bill here in Dallas? That's a lot of people don't realize a lot of our, our power consumption, even though it's always hot here in the summer, you know, we'll kind of feel the, the, the pinch here as we get into the summer with all of our electric bills, but it doesn't stop even then because heating a lot of pl- I heat, my heat is electricity. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not natural gas. So uh, there's, there's some real direct things there, but anyway, so how's things in, we're both in Dallas, so I don't have to ask how I know I can look out my window and see what the weather's like. How's things in your, your neck of the woods? What, what are you in your world? I know you've got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, my world is pretty busy, as you uh, as you noticed. I've gotten interrupted twice now as we were preparing for this call. Um, Dallas is, is very nice today, and uh, it is going to get much hotter. And fortunately, uh, my air conditioner is run on electricity, but I've got my rate locked in, so it won't go up. <laughs> yeah, mine is as well. I'm not after our mastermind on Friday. I'm not sure I locked it in long enough, but as you said, residential. You have limited options and and the real, uh, you know, lower rates are, are out in the future a little bit, at least currently. At the moment. And, who know, at the and, moment. Lord, only yeah. know, and Lord only knows where that'll go. Well, let's do this. Let's take a quick break because I really want to get into your story. I don't know that much about it. kind of want to hear how you found your way from where you started. I, you know, I know you've got some degrees and associations and stuff and you're doing a lot of cool stuff, uh, but I want to hear how you navigated from where you started wherever that is till today so let's take a quick break here a little bit of ricky jean Wright, and it's not the getting there and we'll be right back with carolyn cantrell and warrior versus zombie but the miles become the teacher 
While the student learns real slow Traveling blind most of the time Wherever you go It's not the getting there It's the journey every day It's not a race to see All right, well, we are back. And Carolyn, thanks for the check-in. Glad you're here. So as I said before the break, tell us your story. How did you get from where you started, wherever you want to pick? Uh, I've had people start at birth to everything from, you know, six months, six years ago or whatever. So uh, tell me how you got to from where you started to where you are today, and then we'll take another break. Well, thank you. I'll certainly be happy to do that. Well, let's see. I was born at night, uh, <clears throat> but not last night. Not last say. night, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, I was born in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is wow. a far cry from Dallas, Texas. And uh, that was wonderful, of course. My father was in the military, so we traveled a great deal. We, I think I lived 15 different places before I was 17. Uh, including a couple of years in England, which I absolutely loved. Um, and so I was born into a family where uh, most people did not go to college. Mm -hmm. And so my challenge to my zombie was how to break that cycle and how to break that chain. Yeah, I can understand that. So yeah, I was the first, um, not the first in my family, but in my immediate family, very... Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I kind of get that. And it's interesting because when I when I was young, you know, that was the thing, right? And now it's interesting right. we're seeing with Gen Z's and whatever is uh, some trend to say, well, let's make sure that's a good business of decision before we jump into right. that, which actually makes a whole heck of a lot more sense than, you know, going, getting a degree in underwater basket weaving, and then trying to figure out how to monetize that after having, you know, $100,000 of student loans or something that you see in these cases. So I, I get that. So that's interesting. So you, you, you got into college. So tell me a little bit about how that, that went for you getting through your journey to today. Well, I had my quarter life crisis at 27. I think there's a comedian out there that says she has a quarter life crisis at 25. Um, I looked at 30, uh, just to go over the bow there, and I thought, crap, I need to go get this degree. And so I left IBM and uh, went off and got a degree. It took about six years because I was doing it part time, full time, you know, working multiple jobs, had some really fun adventures and all that. And uh, and then I, I, uh, I did get my bachelor's from University of Houston with, uh, in political science, a minor in psychology, and a minor in math. And it wasn't necessarily that, those initials that made such a huge difference for me. It was the perspective that I gained. Just every class, it was like, oh, this happened before. See, a history class. It's like there's so many similar things that happened in the past. It made me much less anxious about the future because you start to see you see things in context. Uh, so just the overall broadening of my understanding of the world, I thought was more important than any degree, more than more important than getting a bachelor's or a master's or whatever. It just truly did change my perspective. Yeah. And that's, uh, it's actually, we don't dwell on that much in with warriors, but I, it's really, I, I'm becoming more aware of that any, in my generation, and I have five millennial children, and I have a lot of younger clients now. And just that perspective of history. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, I think we've lost that to some degree, even in our universities today, because, um, yeah, our history isn't perfect, but we've learned stuff from it, right? And well, what sometimes just... we sometimes we've learned from it, and sometimes we haven't. Well, but it's it's comforting to see that you know this has happened before, and we we're still here, so we got out of it one yeah. way or the other. Yeah, we we made it through. And yeah. the thing is, uh, especially after the last couple of years, the thing that I found is. Um, the amount of anxiety and fear and other things are directly correlated to the fact that you don't have that perspective, which you just said, you don't mm -hmm. have the perspective of, 
yeah, this sucks. Um, yeah, it's, it's not ideally the way I would have planned it. However, mm -hmm. the, something like this has happened before and I've experienced it or I've read about it in the history books and I know it was worse than what this is and we can make it. And just having that hope, just having that faith, I, you know, if you happen to be on social media, if you kind of, I, there's a thing that I have a little banner around my picture that says faith over fear. And um, yeah, it's, it's easier to stay on your warrior journey. Uh, keep your story intact. If you move forward, knowing that uh, there is hope, there is something ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, so, so you got through, you know, kind of learn what uh, broadened your perspective, um, then coming out of college, uh, and you said you kind of did that part time. So or did that in between jobs and all that stuff. Where did you go from there? Well, I, uh, I did several entrepreneurial things while I was working my way through college. Uh, one of the things I did was uh, teach software. This was back when mm -hmm. WordPerfect was just coming out. This has been a while. I'm dating wow. myself. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. So, I'm. I, I'm. I think I'm older. I, I got more vintage than you. So, so uh, don't worry about that. So that's that's good. Yeah, I remember WordPerfect. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, I put an ad in the paper, and and a lot of lawyers in in Houston. It was like I was Houston at the time needed to, to learn word perfect movie pronto uh, because everything was going to be filed with this new software uh, and it really wasn't difficult but what I found when I was teaching and when I'm when I do a lot of other things we we fear the the new information and so we almost close down on it unless unless we take a couple of deep breaths or maybe a teacher ha helps us take a couple of deep breaths. You know, the, the attorneys could certainly understand this, but it was just this new thing that was just mm -hmm. terrifying at the moment. So I, uh, I did that for a while and I worked catering companies and uh, I uh, did staffing. I just, it was a wonderful whirlwind of a time where I had a goal. I had hope. I was excited about it. Um, I think, I think I lived on peanut butter and scrambled eggs for a while, not together. Those were two separate meals, uh, but it turned out to be just, um, just a wonderful time in my life. And I don't regret a minute of it. Yeah. I think when we look back, uh, I, I always love this because as you, as, as you're on your warrior journey, and that's what I always say, I think everybody, my kids, everybody gets tired of hearing me say, well, it's a journey. Um, cause the reality of it is it is. And mm -hmm. when you, it's only when you look back on your journey and you realize, okay, this happened because this happened and this kind of sucked, or this wasn't great, or this wasn't my favorite part. And the road was pretty rough there, but I made it through and look what I learned and what was I able to do. And it positioned me, like I say, it provides a foundation for our path forward and, it's only afterwards when you're in it or whether you're anticipating and sometimes the anticipation, right. Is worse than actually the in being in it. Right. You look at it right. and go, Oh, I don't know if I can handle any more of this. I'm, you know, but as I always say, God gives you the strength and the resources to deal with what you're having at the time. If you just, you know, kind of let it go, you know uh, you know, so, so, so you made it through that. You learned a lot of stuff what else is there anything else before we get to what you're you're doing today any other any other interesting waypoints along the way no somewhere along the way i got married and i had two beautiful children and they are now adults and uh, they both graduated from excellent universities uh and uh, one lives in new york thank you thank you very much one lives in new york and one lives in denver uh and so i'm very pleased and happy for them that that going to college was just a given mm -hmm. uh, for both of them. Yeah, I think it was. And that's was the case with my kids as well. I mean, I, I said, okay, I made it to college. Now my kids are going to make, it. you know, we always want better and more right. for them than we had ourselves. Right. We don't want them, right. you know, part of the, sometimes the struggle, at least from me, my standpoint as a warrior is I, I'm, I tend to want to give them more support and not allow them to experience the challenge sometimes 
that comes along with it because both challenge and support, right, are required for, mm-hmm. to be healthy, both in our at a cellular level as well as, you know, I mean, that's the way God made us. That's the way we're we're the world we're in, right? If it was all perfect, we'd be living in a fantasy. Mm-hmm. And and frankly, I don't know anybody. We'd, we'd be bored to death. Yeah, it's 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 it makes it fun. So. So your kids are there. So your Dallas is a good place to be. One of the reasons I ended, I ended up in Dallas, I didn't live here all my life. And one of the reasons why I'm still in Dallas is because of all the places to live. It was one of the best places to travel from. So I said, <laughs> if I'm going to, if I'm going to retire, retiring here, I can go to DFW airport and pretty much fly point to point or pretty close to anywhere on the planet if I need to. So, so no matter where my five kids go, um, I can, I can get to them. I can be in mm-hmm. control of that. I can have the transportation there. So that's a beautiful thing. So your kids got off, you got married, kids got off to college. Now they're successful grown adults. Um, so now what, what, what's what, any, any other story we should know before we take a break? Um, no, I think the next, uh, the next level is, is continuing to enjoy challenge, even though I'm not 20 anymore. And, and overcoming that fear of, oh, am I too old to do this? <laughs> Another zombie. You just identified <laughs> a zombie. That's exactly for many, for many of us. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Really. That's, that's, that's very honest. And, and for those of us that, uh, like I say, have more story behind us, we've experienced a degree of success, whatever that looks like along the road, but you realize you get to a point and you say, Hmm, you know, I'm, I need to make a change, either Mm -hmm. it's thrust upon you, or you decide to do it doesn't matter. Then that zombie between your ears of, can I really do it? Am I too old? Can I change? Can't teach an old dog, new tricks, all those kinds of things, right? Those things all start, those, those things start spinning around in your brain. And if you're not careful, they can derail you from that next stage. So, well, let's do this. Um, and you can, if, if we missed anything in your story, we'll pick it up in the next segment, but I want to get to the next segment because I want to really understand a little bit. Uh, it was very fascinating talking about energy and that whole thing. And that seems kind of like, mm, you know, what, it, you know, what's important about that? What's well, really important. I mean, it's part of our entire economy we're finding out and it has a lot to do with all the other aspects of our life that we're all dealing with right now. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and hear why you're doing what you're doing and the value you provide. And if anything were possible, what kind of impact do you want to have? So let's take a break and hear a little more Ricky Jean Wright and our theme song for the audio audience. It's not the getting there. And we'll be right back with Carolyn Cantrell and Warrior versus Zombie. It's not a race to see how many people know your name. One day you realize time was worth more than the gold. It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know Funny how wisdom and youth Are always All right, Carolyn, we are back and the audience is just waiting to hear all about how you're going to solve all of our energy problems. So um, I, I know everybody's going to be waiting to listen to this podcast just so that they can figure out how they can survive or thrive in this uh, interesting world of uh, electricity and fuel and all the other things that we're dealing with. So tell us your, tell us why you're doing what you're doing today and so on, just as I said. Well, I've been in the uh, energy industry, which is difficult to say, uh, and uh, for about 19 years now, I had my own business. I, was, uh, I had a staffing company. Uh, and I decided to close that down back in 2005, six. Uh, and I, a friend of mine was working at an energy brokerage company, and she asked me to come over and you know review the marketing plans and see what they were doing there. And I did, and I realized that electricity is um, really important to everybody. <laughs> so if you're thinking about who would my base be to sell to for a product and you realize that it's everyone, uh, I decided that was a good marketing strategy. Uh, 
Um, and, and it's fascinating because not only do we have just a fixed price, we've got the, uh, the Public Utility Commission has tariffs and rules and they change from time to time. And then all of this electricity is actually changes prices because the futures market for natural gas. Mm -hmm. And if you've never worked in a commodity market, it's a really kind of a conceptual change. You have to think about that price for December of 2025 is lower right now, and I can buy it at that price. But if I wait until December of 25, that price will be higher. So it's, it's kind of a concept, concept that people struggle with from time to time because we don't usually go to our grocery store and, you know, buy the, the things that are, that are scheduled for next year. You know, it's just not there. There's a physical world and then there's a conceptual world of commodities. Uh, and so that, I think, is just absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating for somebody like you. It's and it's probably also somewhat entertaining today. I, I, I actually one of the things you don't know about me is I retired in 2005. So think about the timing there with what you said, and you kind of got into energy in 2005, 2006 timeframe. So I was kind of making a pivot at that point as well. Uh, I was in the resources group at Accenture. I was a partner in the resources group, which included utilities, uh, oil, natural gas, um, oh, okay. you know, all of that stuff. So, so yeah, I, I hung around with a lot of people that, that understood those things a whole lot better than me. Uh, and that were actually delivering those services, even consulted with uh, natural gas, uh, basically power plant, uh, investment group and creator uh, called Panda Power Funds uh, did that after I retired for a bit. So, so I have a little bit of insight into that, and it's fascinating. It's not necessarily fascinating. It's funny to me to listen to the people that we we trust to make our decisions in the area of energy uh, today act like you know, okay, if we make this change, it's not going to affect today's price because it takes a long time to do, whether it's ex exploration and production or what. And the answer is no. Once <laughs> the, the answer is that's not true. That is absolutely not true. Is that, yeah, there may be a, a, t a time that the, that the prices or things stabilize, but the reality of it is the price today for natural gas, for electricity, other things, are directly affected by what we expect the future price to be. Same way the stock market is more affected, more of a stock's value is in the market's expectation of what that's going to be worth than it is the assets. So those, those that have a very naive or, you know, some people say the stupid smart people um, that don't understand what even what you understand is, is kind of fascinating. So how do you how do you do that? I mean, how do you deploy that value, that understanding, that insight in, in what you do? Well, most of the people that I work with, most of the companies that I work with are either manufacturing, commercial real estate, um, uh, just, you know, warehouses, that type of thing. And, 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 and I'm sorry, multifamily uh, housing. Mm -hmm. So whenever they decide to buy uh, their electricity or natural gas, it is a huge part of their budget. And if it's not focused correctly, then it really can, it can ruin a budget. It, it, can, it can take down a business. In fact, we've seen several businesses go out of, out of uh, business because of that. So we give them the market analysis and tell them, this is what we think is happening now. And then this is what we think is happening next year and the year after that. And then we join with them to discuss how they want to uh, structure, whether it's either a high risk product or a low risk product. I sound like I'm a stockbroker, but, um, no. but I, I, I am an energy broker. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's different solutions for everyone. But the bottom line is we want to bring them the lowest cost available. Now, that has been made very difficult lately because... <laughs> Because the uh, oil that normally Ukraine would have uh, received from Russia has been cut off mm -hmm. because of the sanctions. And, uh, and that also cut that oil off and natural gas to Europe and China. 
So all of a sudden, the price of natural gas and oil have gone up substantially based on supply and demand. We have more demand than supply. And so we have much higher prices for electricity and natural gas right now. And that's going to continue until, until we find another solution for Russia and Ukraine. Right. Yeah. And there are some, but anyway, we won't get into that. Um, that could be a whole nother podcast, but there, uh, no, there's no, a lot. I'm not speaking politically. This is just the, yeah, no, the no, I'm, I'm not either. I'm just saying people want to political anything that, that, one of the things I've you've we've all learned, if we haven't learned it, then we haven't been paying attention, is there's not much that's critical to our lives that can't be politicized if people will let it. But it is it is it's a supply and demand. This is pure it's economics. And, and, yeah, this and, is... and again, futures pricing is based upon the expectation of supply and the expectation of demand, as well as today's pricing is micro level supply and demand. I mean, that's, that's those truths, um, no matter how much you want to spin it and how, which side of the decision process you want to be on are, we're going to live with one way or the other. And you can, you can do things for a time, but until you fix the underlying infrastructure, then for you, you're, you're predominantly, as I understand it, talking to the consumer of those resources and trying to help them make good decisions for a longer term, right? That, that, right, that, right, will, exactly. that will not tank them down the road, not just what right. get them through today. And that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's great. So what else, uh, what other, what kind of impact are you hoping to have uh, with what you're doing today? I mean, there's, I, I gather that you're excited about what you're doing. You seem to be very, um, focused on what you're doing, interested. You're, you've, you shared some things with our, our mastermind. We were talking about it. Uh, there's probably a lot more there, but what are you, what is your like big picture? What, is, what kind of impact are you hoping to have? Well, from a business point of view, obviously continuing to help my commercial clients with, uh, uh, with the electricity and natural gas purchases and secondly, uh, we, are, we are becoming much more involved in solar panels and solar farms. And this is not for your house. This is something like 50 acres to 100 acres. Uh, we're working on one right now that's 100 acres. Uh, and regardless of, of how you feel about this as a political view, our grid here in Texas is not really as reliable as we'd like for it to be. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's kind of an understatement. Um, and so I feel like, one, in Texas, we do not have as, as many solar farms as other states, but we do have land and we do have sunshine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're looking into that, and I believe we're going to be able to do much more of that in the future. It's a very selfish reason for me to do that. I'd want the grid to stay up. That's not selfish. I mean, the reality no. is we all... If, if you're not worrying about, or not worrying, if you're not focused on, I don't like to worry, worry is fear. Um, but if you're not focused on how do you navigate your known challenges, um, I don't care whether you're investing money or in industry and energy or, you know, the grid or anything else, right? Diversification is a good thing. Um, I did large multi-billion dollar outsourcing deals. You know, we would put together a deal for 10 years based upon our expectation of a migration from this technical environment to a new technical environment. The only pressure really that's even makes sense in between there is how quickly do you do it? And can you do it in a way that doesn't break the current economy. And that's where the politician or the political aspect starts to come into play. It's not that it's not a good thing to do to have solar farms. I think you should have solar farms. I think we should have more when, you know, again, I'm not taking a stake in anything. I just think having, you know, I worked with BC Hydro in Vancouver, which is the crown corporation that provides hydroelectric utility for British Columbia and having hydroelectric power is a good thing and making sure it's sustainable and so on and so forth. It's only when you inject some kind of 
ideology that forces you to do things at a place where you break it. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, we both live in Texas, right? I mean, on, I remember February 13th, 2021, very, vivid, does. very yeah. vividly that <laughs> week because I, I showed up after traveling through a snowstorm, took me 14 hours on what should have been a seven hour drive, got back, got into bed and my power went out and was gone, was out for 72 hours. So oh I, I very much feel that pain. And that was a microcosm of kind of what we're, you know, with different side effects, if you will, uh, what we're experiencing right now, when people start doing things with uh, an agenda without really understanding uh, the basic economy, economics. So I'm glad that you're focused on that. Let me put it that way. I'm glad that you're helping. And again, we can't change the entire world as my, my vision of changing the world one dream at a time. What does that mm-hmm. mean? You know, it's a ripple effect. If we start mm-hmm. helping people be uh, better at planning, not only their consumption, but their production of energy, then that's a beautiful thing. Any other thoughts on your impact or that you, that you want to have? Uh, just to continue to learn and grow. One of the things that uh, I think is just essential to my well-being and to my life is to open myself up to new ideas and listen and uh, adopt those things that I think are a correct and, and, and not those things that I do not think are correct. Um, it's a, it's a good time in my life. Everybody's all grown up and, and I have freedom to, you know, explore my own interest and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Well, that's a brilliant warrior nugget. There is always be growing in your learning and your understanding and, um, you never get too old for that, right? You never, right. You never outgrow the need to continue growing. And when you do, I figure that's about the end of the road. So, well, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to, I'm going to have two questions for you. One is, so you can think about this while we take a quick break, is if we take away anything from this discussion, your, your story, you know, as a warrior, what would you want us to take away? And then the last thing is, how do we stay in touch with you? So let's take a quick break. We'll hear a little bit more. We'll come into the land the plane segment, as I call it, of Warrior vs. Zombie. And we'll be right back with Carolyn Cantrell. Funny how wisdom and youth are always two different games. The years flew by so fast is the common human complaint the memories in our minds turn to diamonds in our soul and by the grace of God on down the road we go all right we are back Carolyn interesting discussion um, there's so much more we could talk about I again if you have if those of you on the Be Connected platform, or you found us on the YouTube channel, uh, you can you can look at our mastermind from last Friday. Carolyn was featured there, and we had a uh, a pretty spirited and interesting discussion around energy. And we had um, you know people like me who have enough you know know enough to be dangerous, and and uh, you know we we all had questions. I think in this whole area of of energy and navigating forward. Again, we all should have more questions and answers, but we move forward and find the answers. So anyway, so if we take away anything from this discussion, Carolyn, what would you like us to take away? Biggest challenge I've had throughout my life and continue to to face it from time to time is the perception of this is who I am right now and I cannot change that. Uh, Whenever I did not have a college degree and my perception was I don't have a college degree. And it took several sem- several semesters before I didn't have imposter's disease. I was there. I was in college. It wasn't hard. And uh, maybe I should have taken harder classes. Um, but uh, I, I, the, once, I, once I accepted the fact that I could be a college graduate, uh, that made the path much more 
easy to, to fulfill. So just just that perception of I can't do it to, yeah, yeah, I think I can. I think that's what I would suggest. Well, and I think that's brilliant. Um, the reason being is because as I work with folks on their on their unique vision and, and everything that I do and the warriors along the way, we all fall into that that trap, if you will, of, okay, I don't know how to do this or I've never done this before and therefore I must not be able to do this or I wasn't meant to do this. And the fact that you said, you said, okay, I have to, you know, continue to power through that feeling, which it is a feeling uh, to the reality, which is, as I always say, my signature question in my vision challenge, which I know you haven't done, but I mean, uh, when I work with the clients is if anything were possible, what kind of future can you imagine? What would your ideal day look like? Which would your impact be? What would your future look like? And the reality of it is everything is possible. You know, the, there's no limitation. So putting yourself in that box as a warrior and saying, okay, I don't know how to do it. I don't think I can, you know, as you know, Henry Ford, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Right. So, so the point, <laughs> the point is um, knowing that you can is something that every warrior should take forward. And I think that's a great, great warrior nugget for us to take away. So how do we stay in touch with you, Carolyn? This is on live on the Be Connected platform. The replay will be up there. Uh, it'll be on the YouTube channel. How else do we stay in touch? What's the best way to reach out to you either to get to, you know, build a relationship, learn more about what you do, how you can serve the audience, whatever. Um, I'm happy for uh, all of you to have my email address, Carolyn okay. at goodenergy.com, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N. Okay. Um, and I think that probably that's the best way to, to begin a conversation. We can always go from there. All right. So Carolyn at goodenergy.com. So uh, I'll that uh, email, I'll add that to the show notes here and uh, in the description. So if you're listening to this in replay or on the uh, podcast platforms, if you go to the podcast, you'll see that, that uh, email address, but it's Carolyn at goodenergy.com. All right. And on the be connected platform, the show will be up there. So you'll be able to find it as well. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for sharing with our audience. I appreciate it. I love hearing your story. Uh, you know, good to see you again and appreciate you serving our community and the warriors that are gonna hear this podcast. And we'll be back next Thursday, same time with another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And let's hear the final outro of Ricky Jean Wright. Thanks again. It's not the getting there. It's the journey every day. It's not a race to see. How many people know your name? One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know